Hello YouTubers, RugMonkey Jr. here, and today's video is going to be a little bit different. So just a few days ago, the World Health Organization classified gaming disorder as a mental health condition. So today we're going to talk about that because I find it's quite an interesting topic and of course it touches a lot of people that are either subscribed to the channel, that play video games on a daily basis, and I think it, it touches a lot of people in that sense. So first and foremost, there are three criteria to define gaming disorder mental health condition. So the first one is no control over when, how long, and how frequently the person plays video games. The second one is the person does not stop gaming even though it might have negative effects or consequences on their life such as relationships, poor grades at school, poor work performance or losing a lot of jobs all the time and just staying at home. So just generally not having a, a social life or anything of the sorts. And last condition or criteria that makes a gaming disorder classified as a mental health condition is it has to last at least one year. So these are the three criteria that are required to classify a gaming disorder according to the International Classification of Diseases to be a mental health disorder. Now, first of all, um, according to the DSM-5, which is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, the fifth edition, says that internet gaming disorder is a condition that requires further study. So they are, they, they say in the latest edition of this book that uh, there's not enough research to actually classify internet gaming disorder as a mental health condition. So that makes a lot of sense because the three criteria that have been have been given by the World Health Organization aren't the most precise. And this is one of the critiques that a psychologist known as Anthony Bean or Dr. Anthony Bean is bringing to the table that the criteria isn't precise enough to actually classify it as a mental health condition. And on top of that, that gaming in what he's seen from his work is often used as a coping mechanism for anxiety and depression. So just, just reflect on that for a second. How many people do you actually know or watch on Twitch, for example, that actually use gaming as an escape from anxiety or depression? How often do you see that stuff pop up on Twitter? Just think about it for a second. Now, I'm not saying that, uh, of course, these problems might be localized that we're thinking, okay, locally, it's not re it doesn't really seem like a problem to either North America, Canada, United States or whatever, but in certain countries, uh, internet, gaming is really a, a bad issue like for example in South Korea they even have gaming addiction rehab centers which is absolutely insane and also according to an article by Business Insider it was reported that teens in South Korea are spending up to 88 hours a week playing video games which is absolutely mental uh, anything like doing anything for more than for example 40 hours a week is just it's crazy it really really is just think about if you work a week that is more than 40 hours you feel like you have no time you're always doing you're always at work and you don't have any social life so imagine playing 88 hours a week of video games and have school on top of that and possibly even a job so it can actually have some repercussions and in certain countries like that it is a much bigger issue than, for example, in North America. So I understand the fact that the ICD might have wanted to implement gaming or internet gaming disorder as a mental health condition, but this doesn't apply across the globe. And there probably is a lot more research to do before adding it as a mental health condition in the international classification of diseases. Because right now, video games are just once again being looked at as the bad guy, as the root of all evil for all these different things that are happening. So for example, in US, there is a lot of school shootings and we've seen at the beginning of the year that a lot of senators, a lot of Congress and politicians were actually attributing this to violent video games and violence in video games. But it's been proven time and time again that this has nothing to do or very little to do with school shootings. So once again, uh, the ICD is, is putting this as a mental health disorder and it is just villainizing video games. But what about people who spend hours upon hours on other sources of entertainment or media? For example, a study led by Nielsen in 2016 showed that 
an average American adult spent five hours a day watching TV. So why isn't that a disease? That that comes out to 35 hours a week, but nobody blinks an eye at that. But if you're playing video games for about 35 hours a week, everybody loses their collective shit. I mean, if, if it's your preferred source of entertainment, playing video games, first of all, it's more interactive than watching TV, just sitting there and being brain dead. Not everybody does this, but a, ma- a vast majority of people who watch TV, your, your brain is at a much lower state of activity as opposed to when you're playing video games games you have to use your brain to think or hand, do hand eye coordination and all these different things so i mean if it's your preferred source of entertainment video games that is why should it be seen as a mental health disorder now as i said earlier in some in certain situations it really can be if you, you people are like you're playing so many video games that you you can't find a stable job you keep uh, losing relationships you're doing really poor in school but At the same time, this might be another disorder and not necessarily only attributed to internet gaming disorder. It might be another health condition, mental health condition that makes the person addicted or have a tendency to be addicted to things and not specifically video games. To come back to the point of uh, TV, uh, it's been known for a while now, a lot of people do it, they binge watch TV shows. I mean, how many times have you heard somebody come up to you or one of your friends say, oh, this weekend I binge watched whatever TV show, a Marvel TV show on Netflix. I mean, how often have you caught yourself binge watching TV for extended periods of time from like something like eight hours a day? I mean, it's okay every now and then. It's not necessarily a problem if you're doing this occasionally. I mean, we all know people who on release of a new game just spent an entire day playing that game, but got back to their regular life the next day or the after After the weekend was over, they still have their priorities and responsibilities in order, but I do believe that once a person gets so into video games and spends all of their time doing this and it actually starts hindering their job performance, uh, their social life, their grades at school, it does become a problem and that needs to be looked at, but I don't think it needs to be classified as a mental health disorder. So I wanted to make this video uh, because I think it was a very interesting topic. I know it's a little bit different than the content that I usually put out, but I want to know your thoughts on the issue. Do you think it should be classified as a mental health condition? Um, Do you think it should not be? Do you think it is an issue in certain countries or certain people have these types of issues where they have, uh, they're just like addicted to video games, but it might not be because only video games, you know, they might have uh, a personality that has a tendency to be addicted to things. So all these different topics, I know this video was a little bit all over the place. I tried to uh, construct it and build it out in small different increments and to make it a little bit more clear. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I'm really interested in knowing what you think about this that came out just the other day from the World Health Organization. While you're down there, be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already i release battlefield and first person shooter related content pretty much every day and as always thank you very much for watching i really appreciate it and i'll see you guys in the next video have a good one